At the end of part 4, I said I'd put this off for 6 months. That was... way more than 6 months ago. Uh, whoops. I didn't bother saving the recordings for most of the previous attempts, but I did save the deaths, so let's go ahead and get a progress report. Wow, that's deaths and stuff. Well, let's go ahead and get into the attempts I did save. I started my adventure by picking the pre-sequel. The upside of playing the pre-sequel first is it's proven to be the most difficult for me, so I'm getting it out of the way. The downside is I have to play the pre-sequel over and over and over again, but I'm not too concerned because I have a plan. But we'll get to that. I picked Timothy. I decided I should only pick characters who are still canonically alive at the end of Borderlands 3, that way I have plot armor. I easily killed Deadlift because he's a bitch, I killed Redbelly because he's a pussy, I killed the Bosun because he's a giant man baby, and I rescued Felicity who's a cool chill homie. How did I accomplish this? I had a secret weapon. Big gun that shoot fast. The gun that turns health bars into dust and dust into smaller dust. I don't know, it's a good gun. Now's about time I should tell you why I wasn't concerned about the pre-sequel. Alright, now I have this skill, Merger. Let me just, uh, wait, uh, wait, uh, hold on, uh, there we go. So the lasers are here to stay. That's cool. Oh, hey, they're gone. They're still there, but they're invisible. How long are these lasers gonna stay out? Yes. Now I know what it's like to be Cyclops from X-Men because everything I look at dies, including Felicity, which... I don't want to play this game anymore. I'm not crying, you're crying. Fuck you. Jack had me rescue a bunch of scientists, which turned out to be a waste of time. Now the only thing standing between me and Zorpedon, other than a bunch of people that are one passing glance away from the Shadow Realm, is the section that Randy put in the game specifically to bully me in particular. I did a bunch of spooky jumps between heart palpitations and somehow made it out of there without getting cliffified. Okay, now it's finally time to fight the final boss. I stared at Zarpadon real hard and she died. Twice. And just like that, I beat the pre-sequel. Why is the game still going? Oh yeah, we were gonna open a vault. Okay. Something happened with an eyeball and Jack seemed mildly upset about it, but I left, so I didn't really catch the details. Hey, remember the RK5, the big fuck you murder ship that gave me some trouble last time? I found out you can hide in the elevator and just fully leave the arena. I wish I'd known that before. Well, it's dead now, so it's time to fight the final boss. The Sentinel is the most difficult final boss in the Borderlands series, but that's not saying much. It's dead. Well... Are you fucking kidding me? Yes. That was an edit, I didn't actually die. Classic prank. And just like that, I beat the pre-sequel without dying. It's all uphill from here. Next up is Borderlands 1. I picked Lilith. Now I know what you're gonna say. Lilith is dead at the end of Borderlands 3, so I should have picked Roland. But she's still alive. She just turned into the moon. There's a difference, probably. Either way, that doesn't happen until the end of Borderlands 3. And that game has skippable cutscenes. So if I skip it, it didn't happen. That That's what I'm going with. After killing some people that were just minding their own business, I traveled to the General Knox DLC. Now I know what you're thinking. Damn, Mick, you're looking sexy today. Thank you. Also, this DLC is level 30, and I'm not level 30, which means death is probable. But don't worry, calm the fuck down. This place has gun, and I want money. I farmed the area until I had enough money to do... Can you guess? It's Merchant of Death. I did the Merchant of Death glitch. But I'm too lazy to do the Merchant of Death glitch for hours on end, so I wrote a script to do the glitch for me. Now I'm level 48. I beat Borderlands 1. There's no point going into it. It took two hours. I don't think I went into Fight for Your Life a single time. It went roughly how you'd expect starting the game 20 levels higher than the final boss to go. Well, it went well. Now it's time for Borderlands 2, but first I'd like to point out that this is already the furthest I've ever gotten in this challenge. Which is kind of sad. I picked Gage. I'm sorry, but I have to. I immediately exploited Mordecai's hard work for XP and got to level 11. Now I have the skill Buck Up. 
which is useless because I don't have a shield yet. Without a shield, I'm vulnerable out in the cold, so instead of fighting, I decided to be a pacifist until I can find a shield. I tried to let Knuckle Dragger live, but Death Trap had other plans. Technically, I'm still a pacifist because I didn't do anything. I just happened to have a homicidal murder robot as a best friend. Anyway, I abandoned pacifism and murdered a bunch of people in the hopes that Hammerlock would give me a shield out of respect. He did. I'm no longer naked and afraid, now I'm clothed and afraid. In the pre-sequel, I used an infinite damage glitch. In Borderlands 1, I used an infinite XP glitch. And in Borderlands 2, I'm gonna be using an infinite shield glitch. Kinda funny how each game has a different type of glitch. Yeah, this is gonna take like 10 minutes. Okay, so now my shield comes back instantly if I take damage. I can still get killed if I come across, I don't know, a single exploder? But I'm sure that won't happen. Believe it or not, Boom Boom and Flint died. I made it to Sanctuary and Frau got kidnapped, so I need to go find Lilith. Oh, wait, I'm not supposed to know it's Lilith yet. Uh, I met Spooky Fire Person and turns out it's Lilith. Whoa, crazy. Anyway, in order to rescue Frau, I have to go to the Bloodshot Stronghold. But to do that, I have to do things with cars. Now, if you get hit by a car, you instantly go into fight for your life. And if you get hit by a car again, you instantly die. Now, I'm not a fan of instant death, so I need to be careful. See this guy? He went off a cliff and instant deathed. I can't let that be me. I didn't have any close calls though, so I made it to the blood shots. Glitches are no, Bad Ma is a joke. Which is why I farmed him up to level 15. I went to the Tor DLC and got myself an amp shield. Since my shield instantly comes back, the amp drain of this shield may as well not exist. Which means any amp shield is just a shitty B shield. Nice! Bloodshot took 8 minutes, Wilhelm took 12 minutes, and getting back to Sanctuary took 20 minutes. That's probably on pace for world record. What's the speedrun record? Less than 2 hours! So I made it back to Sanctuary pretty slowly, apparently. And now for the Borderlands Christmas special. I killed a snowman. Okay, back to Borderlands. The preserve took like 10 minutes. Also, Bloodwing... Yeah, Bloodwing doesn't like fireworks, but to be fair, neither do I. I got sensitive ears, and they are loud. Apparently Mordecai does too, because he seems upset about something. Probably the fireworks. I got Brick, I killed Jack, and now it's time for the climb to the bunker. Easily the most difficult section of the game. Constructors hurt a little, but I hurt more. Oh, god damn, I hurt a lot. The bunker showed up and using the power of hiding, it peacefully surrendered and we became best friends. Jack wasn't happy about me befriending the bunker, so he killed Angel, killed Roland, and kidnapped Lilith. So now it's time for a brick mission. There's a skip in Sawtooth Cauldron that should make this go faster. I got it on my first try and found some bombs as a birthday present for Brick. Now it's time for a Mordecai mission. I went in a pipe. Good, good job, Mordecai. Now the only thing I have left to do is Heroes Pass. I have struggled a grand total of zero times so far, so I'm not concerned. Oh, okay, that hurts a little. That hurts a lot. Good thing I have a big ass rocket launcher. Fuck. If this is how I die, I'm, go I'm gonna throw a tantrum. Brick, you are officially on your own. I managed to make it through that wall without dying and the warrior perished. The warrior fight is always easy as hell. God damn, three games down. I only have one left. The longest one and the one that doesn't have any game breaking glitches that I know of and I don't feel like looking them up. Borderlands 3, which still manages to be the easiest anyway. Oh, so turns out I have a one life that's still alive that I forgot about. So that's cool. I started this character, forgot about it for like a month and a half, and then just went on to the pre-sequel. Looks like I already have a bunch of legendaries at level 10. That's Borderlands 3. So far I've beaten Mouthpiece. Yeah, okay. I resisted the urge to let Lilith die and made it to Sanctuary. I have to go to Prometheus and do things that are extremely easy because of all the legendaries. I killed a brain that told me to go to Athenus for vault purposes. I made it to Athenus and met whoever this is. 
And nothing really happened there. There was no boss fight or anything, I think, and I got a vault key piece. Well, that was a waste of time. Suddenly, I was on the moon. I still don't know why I'm on the moon, but I'm sure if I kill enough people, I'll figure it out. I killed a bunch of people and made it to the boss arena. And then I realized Guardian rank has been on this whole time. Which means this run is invalid. And not the whole run, but I will have to restart Borderlands 3. Or... Or I could just not? Honestly, who gives a shit? I killed Krakatawa Ball and got the Vault Key thing. Then I killed Krakatawa Prime and got a cool gun. Now it's time to fight the most beautiful boss fight in all of Borderlands. Old Dickhead Skullface. Alright, he's dead. What's next? Oh good, it's Eden 6 time. Let's just skip ahead a bit. Eden 6, Eden 6, even more Eden 6. Oh hey, a boss fight, it's dead. Finally done with Eden 6. Tannis got kidnapped because nothing happens in Borderlands unless someone gets kidnapped. I fought through a bunch of bandits to get to two weird magicians and a robot who died. Uh, Tannis is a siren, I guess. Okay. And just like that, I was at the final boss. Troy decided this game is Devil May Cry now, but I- Oh, okay, he hurts me! Killed him pretty easily. I skipped the cutscene, so I don't know what happened, but for some reason, Tyrene is very much gone and also alive. I'm very much angry, and also angry. Raise of hands, who wants to go to Necrotafeo? No one? Raise of hands, who remembers Necrotafeo? No one? Cool, so fuck all that. With all that Bologna out of the way, it's time to take on the final boss of the entire series. I have to use all of the skills I've developed after these two years she's dead. Oh, okay. And just like that, I beat the game. Which means, can I beat Borderlands, Borderlands 2, Borderlands the pre-sequel, and Borderlands 3 without dying a single time? No, I fell off a cliff in Necrotafeo. Whoops.